Paul, let's start with a, a couple of personnel issues. Uh, Liam Thompson first, loan move, good for him? Yes, yeah, good for him. I, uh, you know, there was an opportunity for him to go and play in January. I didn't want him to do. Uh, I still wasn't doing the merry jig that him going this time, but he does need to play. He's a little bit, um, and his attitude's been amazing. That's possibly why we've permitted it. Um, but it's only for a month initially, so um, you know, I can pull him back at the end of that. So he's nearly a week into it already. So yeah, he needs to play games. He needs for his own psychology because he hasn't been which is my fault, I picked the team, but uh, he hasn't been getting the game time. So if I, would, if I was to throw him in next week, for example, he probably wouldn't be in the right physical state or mental state. So he needs to play and, his, like I said, his attitude's been spot on though. So him going to go and play at Scunny will do him no end of good. So um, we'll keep an eye on him. And then, like I said, if we need to pull him back, we will. On a more sort of general point, do you prefer players that want to play games, wherever that may be, than, than rather someone who would be happy staying and not playing? I mean, that's a, I've got a very long answer for that. Look, from a manager point of view, players who are content in not playing are low maintenance. So that's a good thing. But from a group ethic point of view and from a, look, I'm going to call upon you, you want the ones who are always hungry to play. However, they're the ones that are harder to manage because you're constantly, you know, having conversations and saying, look, you're getting closer or you need to do more of this and more of that. But like with Tomo, Tomo was always a very good trainer. Um, I told him what I wanted him to improve on and in fairness some training sessions are purely tactical based for the Saturday and there isn't an opportunity for him to really impress so he now has this opportunity to go and play games we'll watch every minute every like the Monday when we come in the coaching staff will watch his game and see how he gets on so look you I just want to be surrounded by people who love the game who want to play no matter what obviously but go about it the right way and um, Tomo's definitely one of them lads who goes about it the right way and that's why you know, we've allowed him to go and play. And you hinted uh, toward this last week, but James Chester's got some minutes under his belt for the 21s this week. Yeah, he played um, Monday uh, for 45 minutes and he'll play again Friday night um, for hopefully about 60 minutes. So we've got to try and build him up. So um, if called upon, he's in a position where he can uh, contribute. How's the rest of the squad? Obviously no Jason Knight this weekend for you. No, Knight, he's uh, gone on his international um, uh, call-up. I was going to say something else then, but international call-up, which is uh, great for him. Um, and everyone else is fine. Obviously, we, we uh, had a, a tough meeting on Monday, really. Not a tough meeting, but, uh, you know, this is what I see, and I think the lads are expecting maybe more. But obviously, it goes without saying that our performance at the weekend was, you know, pretty deplorable. And, wasn't acceptable and I can accept losing football matches I've always said that and you have to move on but our level of performance was poor that was um, very disappointing so we'd try to address that on Monday but the good thing is there's always the next game so Tuesday it was all about like this is you at your best we showed them loads of clips of how good they were and and how we want them to see them again on Saturday so we'd built them up trained really hard on Tuesday so the lads are in a a really good place, I think, actually, surprisingly. Um, and then, it, because that's the joy of sport, you've always got the next game, always. And like uh, I spoke to you earlier, that you know Peterborough lost at home to Cheltenham 3-0, and then that's like a calamity for them, because you don't want to be losing home games, especially to possibly teams you know further down. Um, and then they went and won two away games on the spin. So look, you, you, have to, you have to feel hurt with the performance. The performance killed me at the weekend. But you just have to move on really quick. You've got, you know, eight, nine games, potentially more to to put it right and to be where you want to be. And it's a good opportunity for, you know, all the lads, everybody here, everyone who supports uh, to get behind the lads and have a right good push. We talked about um, reaction yeah. and getting a reaction and seeing a reaction probably more than, yeah. than you would have liked in, in recent weeks. But it's, it sounds as though so far this week you have seen the reaction you wanted from the guys. Yeah, I have. And in fairness, last week when I think I got asked the question, or the week before, similarly, and they said, oh, have you seen a reaction? And I hadn't. I, I can openly admit I hadn't seen a reaction. I, I didn't, there wasn't the opportunity possibly in training. Whereas this week, uh, with the Tuesday session especially, we've done loads of out-of-possession stuff, loads of pressing stuff, loads of hard work stuff, all the stuff, in my opinion, that helps you win football matches, the uglier stuff, really. So we've been, the lads were really good at that uh, Tuesday, and some lads... Um, really shone in that so it makes you know hence why when we pick the team sometimes the team sheet comes out I presume all fans have their favourite players I get that but they'll be like oh my god why has he played well you know I 
can't tell you in this meeting what my team's going to be, but you know, when you ask me after the game Saturday, I can explain, look, th this lad was unbelievable Tuesday, Thursday, hopefully the same players are good today. These trained the best, these got the message in the best, so that's why they play and that's why, you know, we, we have the joy of working with them every day to allow us to pick the best team for the opposition. We've watched them um, last four games and we like to think we know what they're going to do, although football is very random, but we have to try and pick the team and the way the lads are trained this week, there's going to be some you know, difficult decisions to make. What's the assessment of, of Peterborough then? They seem to be a side that are at their best when they sort of play the sort of football I think you like, which is trying to score goals and trying to win games. Yeah, they're good. I, I mean, I love Fergie and I played against him loads of times. Really good footballing bloke and like one of my best friends, Dale Tong's on their coach and staff as well, who's a really good coach as well. So I, I know how they want to play. Um, and I, I went and watched them play against Burton the other night and I just could hear Fergie saying all the time about play forward, play forward. And like they're, they're footballers, they can play, but they have a real cut and edge to them. They do play uh, a little bit that I like, a little bit basketball. It is a bit end to end at times. They are prepared to try and outscore teams and that's how I like to see football being played. So uh, it could go you know, one of many ways on Saturday, but I don't think it will be from a lack of effort of either team trying to win it. I don't think you know, Peterborough and Norwell are so a team that think, oh, if we can just stay in it for 70 minutes and then the last 20 minutes go for it. Like From the outset, both teams will be trying to score and for a neutral, it should be a great game. Uh, we'll have to wait and see.